Hi everyone, it's Ajit Amit here and welcome to my review of the Hyphenman HER9. This is going to be a relatively short one. Uh, I've had this headphone in for a while. It's, it's been about uh, a month or more than a month now. Uh, I have listened to it. I've tried to formulate opinions on it. I've just not gotten around to sharing my thoughts on it. The TLDR is that it is a fairly good headphone. So other reviewers who are talking good things about it, saying good things about it, I do find that my views align with theirs. Um, but now for the you know more elaborate part of the review, I do have taken notes. I have taken notes that I want to read out very quickly about this headphone and then dive deeper into some of the things that I've noted. So first of all, it's super light. It's su super comfy. It is extremely comfortable. That's worth mentioning because I have become very susceptible to discomfort with headphones and especially weight. So it does matter to me that it's light and ergonomic and all that. The pads are very, you know, soft. You have the R and L markings, which really help. Uh, the assign sound isolation is fairly decent. It looks stupid, so that's there. It looks like just the most um, you know stupid-looking headphone that I've ever worn. Um, so that's worth keeping in mind. The build quality is also super cheap. Uh, so a lot of um, you know what goes into Hyperman headphones, I feel like, are very inferior material. Hyperman does very little wrong when it comes to sound. They perhaps might be the most impressive headphone brand globally when it comes to being consistent with the sound quality, with their tuning, with the technical performance, with the price. All that happened is perhaps unbeatable, unassailable. But when it comes to build quality, I feel like they let themselves down and they let us down. So that's what it is. It's a great sense of depth of stage. So that's worth keeping in mind. So it's a closed back. So you're going to feel like it's a closed back. Some of you might be lulled into a false sense that it's not because it's not as close as a closed back. Because if you see the protrusion of these cups, of course, you hear sounds from all the way out, right? Because of the sort of width or the sort of, you know, protrusion of the cups. So that gives the impression of soundstage width. However, what I think is impressive is how when sounds are supposed to come from far away, they actually come from far away. So you get that sense of perceived distance, which I think is very beautiful and realistic. It adds emotion to your listening experience, I think. Deep bass. Everyone is talking about the bass of this. It is as good as people say it is, especially for the price. It's very deep bass. As a matter of fact, it's not just for the price. A lot of headphones, even in the $1,500 price fund, don't do bass as well as this. The RUF Stealth, for example, has higher quality bass in some ways. It's more nimble, textured, fast, and all that. But the rumble here, the depth here, the thickness here, the sheer depth of bass here is very impressive, guys. Resolution is lacking. I mean, it's, of course, a subjective statement. Resolution is lacking insofar as my other headphones go. So, you know, I've listened to a whole lot of expensive headphones or higher-end headphones, rather, for the most part of my review career, so to speak, although by no means is it a profession for me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, resolution can be found lacking, especially for A, being with higher-end headphones. It's also not as resolving as a Sundara, for example. The timbre is solid, which is saying a lot. Vocals and, and can be a tad forward in certain tracks. So the vocal has been tuned with some forwardness because it does play along well with the bass. The bass has a shelf. Um, however, if there are tracks that do not token the bass frequencies, the vocals might come off as slightly forward. But that's fine, I've noted, because it would be boring otherwise. So yeah, I mean, if the vocals were not forward, I think just having this amount of bass might become boring after a bit of time if there was no other tuning sort of quirks to balance out the bass. Bass is solid. I've heard better quality bass, but the bass quantity is impressive. It's dark sounding. It is dark sounding. The treble can be somewhat, uh, um, you know, uh, um, on the more friendly side, on the more muted side. Uh, there's a peak somewhere, but I haven't graphed it, so I can't really say for certain where the peak is. And by and large, it's smooth sounding. Image separation is good generally, pretty good for the price. It's at its best with simpler, slower tracks that token bass. So by that, I mean... I played Brandy Carlisle's Black Hole Sun cover, and it was phenomenal with this. Female vocals are great with this. The bass, there's a lot of bass on that track. The drums sound phenomenal on this. Very thick and very impactful and powerful. Uh, coupled with great vocals. I played Bruce Dickinson's Dark Side of the Aquarius from the Accident of Birth album. It's a heavy metal track, and because heavy metal tracks can get complex, that's when I found this headphone to be slightly wanting because it sounded a bit congested. Um, I played a mad season track called Wake Up, and that was very well done. The vocals, the male vocals were done, handled with the pomp, with a lot of finesse. Uh, the male vocals sounded really natural on this. Great timbre uh, and great bass as well. I played this more sort of you know, upbeat track called Beggin' by 
Monskin or Monoskin. So Monskin or Monoskin is a very interesting band, I, th- I, th- I think, from Denmark or Europe in general. And um, so it's, you know, um, Monskin is a Danish term that I think means moonlight. Begin is a nice track. And it's a pretty upbeat track. And this, this headphone played the track really well, kept the rhythm, the pace, the timing of the track really well. It sounded great. I played Billie Jean by Daniela Andrade, Out to Get You by James. A softer track, a male vocal softer track. And of course, uh, Daniel Andrade's cover of Billie Jean was also a softer, mellower, smoother track. So vocals are amazing on this, bass are amazing on this. And I think that for most audiophiles, I feel like most audiophiles get impressed when a headphone does mid-range well and bass well. I do think it's a smaller subset of audiophiles like me who also really value the treble. This is not going to impress you for treble, but the bass and mid range are handled so well that I feel like this will keep most audiophiles happy. So the current price of this headphone is not what it was initially listed at. This is the wired version, which initially was listed by hi at $600. This is the wire that it comes with, the cable that it comes with, but more on this later. The box that it comes with is all the way at the back. Uh, it was initially priced at 600, but since then it has, it has had price cuts. It was then priced at 350. And currently on Amazon or on the Hyphman website, as of the time of shooting of this video, which is December 2022, this is now being currently priced at $250, which honestly I think, think is a steal for the fact that these are closed back headphones and they deliver a super performance, especially in terms of tonality and in some ways technical performance as well for the price. So this is for me a very clear recommendation, guys. It's a very clear recommended buy. It's a solid performer from Hyphenman. I do have a slight preference for the Sundara close back, which a lot of people didn't like. But I can see why that was slightly wonkier and different kind of a tuning. But this is slightly more mainstream in the sense that, you know, it's a nice bassy set. It's got good mid-range, which people will like. The mid-range, I dare say, is perhaps slightly less wonky than on the Sundara close back, which, again, I liked more because of his technical performance. Because that headphone... Uh, is closer to a Sundara and technical performance than this headphone is. However, this perhaps is a more palatable, more pleasing tonality and tuning. So if you don't mind this weird look, or if you maybe you like this weird look, because the red does look flashy. There's a strange sort of metallic gleam going on here, although this is plastic. Uh, if you don't mind this look, you have lived with high and build quality before. Of course, the service is great. high customer service is top of the class. So if you have those things, sort of, you know, those experiences before, and if you like what this offers, especially in terms of bass and the natural timbre and great and pretty good imaging and staging for a close back, I think this would be something that I think you can easily blindly buy. However, I would never recommend a blind buy. Do see if you can audition first before you buy something like this. Accessories are minimal with this, as one would expect. This cable is one of the newer style of cables that Hyphenman ships your headphones with. It's rubbery, but it's better. It's less janky and, and you know ugly looking compared to the other cables. That shoebox kind of situation, of course, a lot of you will be acquainted with with Hyperman headphones. That's it, guys. Good headphone. Solid, solid headphone for the price, let me say, but good headphone overall in the realm of other headphones. So that's saying a lot. I was listening to this for a fair bit of time last night listen, while working uh, and enjoying myself. Um, the last thing I want to say that is this headphone is best paired, like I said one time before, with tracks that are simpler, tracks that token, tracks that have male vocals or female vocals, and tracks that have bass in them. That's all I have for you. Thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for my next one. Bye-bye.